Hey, welcome to the episode of WTF is Modern Monetary Theory. This episode is basically for the Marxists out there who seems like they don't realize that MMT acknowledges Marxists, goes through his book Capital and analyzes it like any any uh, economist would do as far as you know any kind of economic theory of the past and you know present. Anyway, so I start on uh, page four twenty one, and it's a the later later of the of the page, and let's see, you know, start it pretty much starts with the following sections. Consider alternative heterodox theories of crisis, beginning with the Marxist perspective. In Marx's view, crises are uh, due to internal contradictions inherent in the capitalist system. Indeed, he believes that these crises would become increasingly severe until workers would rise up in revolution to overthrow capitalists and replace it with socialism. Uh, let's see, we next turn to uh, Keynesian. Now, again, this is from the, uh, the macroeconomic textbook. Again, by Wynn Mitchell, L. Randall Wright, who just had a, a RP Live, so you can check it out on YouTube, and Martin Watts. Uh, called macroeconomics. So, anyway, so let's see where I at. Uh, we next turn to Keynesian theory of crisis. Note that wait a minute, don't worry, excuse me. I sometimes give myself a oh, no, no, I got it, yeah. Uh, note that we have also covered Keynes ideas in detail in chapter 12 and 13. While less critical of capitalism than Marx, Keynes also saw the tendency towards crisis as inherent to capitalism. His followers paid particular attention in, to chapter 12 and 17 of 24 in the central theory in which, uh, which focus on fundamental faults of capitalism. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, skipping that part of it. Oh, yeah. Skipping that part of it. Where's that? The, wait. No, I was just skip this part right here and go to the actual section, which is 26.3, 422, Marxist theory of crisis. Some an analysis have an identified processes. Yeah, uh, have identified processes inherent to the operation of capitalist economies to explain the uh, in incidence of crisis. In other words, rather than looking to fundamentally irrational uh, man manias or to exogenous shocks uh, emanating from monetary authorities. These approaches attribute, or sorry, attribute <laughs> crisis to uh, crisis to internal or endogenous factors. Karl Marx and Capital claim that anarchy of production is an inevitable characteristics uh, characteristic of an unplanned economy in which decisions are made by numerous individuals in pursuit of profit. The capitalist system is such a system, and it's wait, is uh, such a system and is subject to disproportional disproportionalities of production is that is uh, so, so that some of the produced goods that cannot be cannot be sold at a price uh, high enough to raise expected profits central to his explanation was the recognition that, that production always begins with money some of which is borrowed and this is used to purchase labor and the uh, instruments of production in order to produce uh, commodities for sale if however some of the commodities cannot be sold at a sufficiently high price loans cannot be repaid and bankruptcies occur creditors may also be forced into bankruptcy when their debtors default because the creditors themselves will have outstanding debt that they cannot service in this way a snowball of defaults spread throughout the economy, generating a panic as holders of financial assets begin to worry about the soundness of their investments. Rather than waiting for uh, debtors to default, holders of financial assets attempt to liquidate or sell assets to obtain cash and other safer assets. 
this high demand for liquidity, cash, and marketable assets expected to hold the normal value causes prices of less liquid assets to collapse and at the same time generates a uh, reluctance to spend as people try to hoard money. Thus, a financial crisis occurs in conjunction with a collapse of aggregate demand. Uh, let's see. Marx argued that money is preconditioned for an economic cycle because it's, it allows the, the separation of sale and purchase. He criticized Ricardo for denying a possibility of uh, the possible denying the possibility there we go of glut. Ricardo's mistake was viewing the capitalist production as similar to production for barter exchange. No one would offer something for barter exchange without simultaneously demanding something in return. Supply or yeah, supply increased demand. But if one can sell for sell for sell them sell for the money, wait. If one can sell for money, there we go. Then a sale does not necessarily create a demand. Ricardo's theory cannot apply to a capitalist economy, which production is for sale for money. Marx argued that even in case of simple commodity production at CMC, prices becomes possible. One produces a commodity for sale for money, CM, in order to purchase another commodity, but one might choose to postpone the next purchase, MC, by holding on to that money instead. Uh, in a sense, uh, here C uh, stands for a commodity that is produced. M is the money for which the produce commodity is sold, and C is a different commodity, different commodity that the, fir the first purchaser purchases with the money from the sale of the, the first commodity. In this consequence, I'm oh, sorry, in the sequence rather, money is simply as intermediary and medium of exchange as the purpose of production is to may obtain commodities in exchange. One might hold money temporarily as a store of value until one finds the desired commodity. This is still not a theory of capitalism, but even simple commodity production can experience a crisis. Let's see. Uh, uh, as we saw in chapter 3 and 11, in capitalism, production begins with money, only on ex uh, expectation of receiving more money. Later, in this case, many uh, things uh, can go wrong. Producers may not uh, believe production will be profitable, so it's not uh, undertaken at all. Alternatively, produced goods may not be, not be sold because capitalists, have mis misperceived the demand for commodities they produce or even if pro products are sold. The profits may be lower than expected. Marx defines capitalist production as a process of MCPCM, where P is the production process that transforms commodity inputs. C to find to final commodities, C for sale to, re to, rely, to realize more money, which includes profits. Note that the, that C is used to indicate commodity inputs, and C is used to den denote final commodities. The capitalist producers does not have a choice to not sell. Capitalists must sell in order to recoup the M money, which with which they started. They do not produce commodities for their own use, but rather produce them only to sell at profit. Note that Marx was not interested in a uh, swindler my theory of profit that is a theory based on buy low sell high strategy. Prior to Marx, this was a common explanation of the source of profits that is the argument that profits are created out of trade. However, Marx wanted to explain the source of profits in the production process itself. In other words, his question was, will all capitalists be able to achieve M? He concluded that this is the this is this is a, this is possible only if aggregate demand is sufficiently high and pro and properly distributed. If not, any number of things can go wrong. To per per precipitate a crisis, including overproduction of commodities or a sudden fall of performance rate, 
thus comprise actually actuality theory, what actually happened. Because, but all the all we we, but all we need is a theory of effective demand based on monetary theory of production to allow the, the for the possibility of prices. Marx argued that capitalism is generally subject to increasingly uh, severe prices. Briefly, this is due to the tendency to replace living labor, human labor with dead labor, capital equipment produced by labor in Marx. In Marx's uh, theory, only living labor can produce a surplus labor value, or dead labor can only produce the labor required uh, to produce the capital equipment. As So as dead labor replaces living labor, the amount of surplus value produced tends to fall. Surplus labor value is the source of profits and is and as surplus uh, surplus surplus let me go, value falls, profits also fall. While Marx enumerated enumerated countervailing tendencies that could uh, emulate and postpone this, he believed that the rate of profit will tend to fall over time. As profit falls, capitalists have less reason to produce which generates downturns brought about by insufficient demand. The downturn makes it difficult to realize profits and service, service debt, which can generate an increase in demand for credit to be used to pay debts. A fire sale of assets can uh, accompany this demand for credit, fueling falling asset prices, the downturn can turn into a severe financial crisis. Marx believed that capitalism is ultimately doomed, as eventually workers will, would rise up in response to these increasingly uh, severe crises, overthrowing capitalism, replacing it with socialism. I freaking hope so. That's what we need, is people to get up off their butts and fight against the machine, I guess you could say. But anyway, so let's see. Uh, Baroness Sweezy, 1966, replaced Marx's concept of tendency at the fall of rate of profit by tendency of the surplus is rise. This occurs at capitalism. Squeeze works increase exploitation reduces reducing wages or, or require more work hours for the same pay. Now, I'm not sure. I think it's what that. Let me make sure it's on here. Okay. Da, da, da. Now, this incurs as capitalist squeeze workers increasing exploitation reduces wages or require requiring more work hours for the same pay. The surplus must be uh, absorbed through a increased consumption, b investment, and c waste. But as capitalist profit rise uh, rises, their consumption as a ratio to profit falls, and the aggregate supply effect. Of investment generates excess capacity to investment falls. Thus, waste is the only solution, largely taking the form of sale effort, military adventures, and outsized growth of the financial sector to absorb the excess surplus created. In a similar vein, Joseph Gilman uh, argued that modern capitalism produces an ununiversable weight, uninvestable surplus. In a sense, the problem is that capitalism is too successful. Its capacity to produce exceeds its ability to find new areas of which to invest. Capital uh, saving technology, technological advances adv reduces the need for surpluses, while rising productivity of both. Uh, uh, wait, <laughs> wait, uh, uh, productive of. Labor increases surplus. Some of the surplus can be absorbed to wasteful spending, with some private and some public, such as advertising and war. However, this is limited because it increases social, moral, and political tendencies that are incapable with democracy as the wasteful spending drains the public, the public purse. Hence, while a policy to increase demand can work temporarily to, in, to create uses for the universal un uninvestable there we go, surplus, it cannot work in a long run. It requires an ever-growing public sector to absorb the public, but capitalists will not sit back and let the economy become socialized. Along similar lines, 
uh, Kalecki argued that mature capitalism exhibits a tendency to produce excess uh, capacity that then leads to a stagnation. The demand for consumption goods is constrained to constrained by total wages paid in both the investment and the consumption goods sectors. The demand for investment goods as a function of re realized profits, rapid accumulation of capital requires that the demand for capital growth faster than uh, than total wages. But excess productive capacity limits the demand for a new capital requirement. Hence, capitalism needs another source of a spontaneous demand, such as technology, innovation to absorb capital, or the rising growth, the rising growth of government spending. The problem is worsened by a steady rise of the degree of monopoly power since the capacity to set price and prices is supposed to oh, wait, supported by lower output and the maintenance of excess capacity to uh to uh, to toward off comp competitor competition toward off competitors and competition though that depresses demand and only worsens the public as the economy stagnates. Okay, I think that's it. As far as I'm not trying to go past Marxism, because that's not what this is not this episode is about. But I think uh, it's kind of clear here that MMT teaches that uh, currency is a way of exchanging for goods and services. Is not is that's not capitalism. Capitalism is accumulating capital. It's accumulating uh, property. It's accumulating businesses, stuff of that nature. Uh, I think that's where the two differ as far as that part goes. Uh, a lot of people who don't, who can't separate the two, um, uh, they get the two confusing. They think the MMT is, um, on capitalist side or, uh, defending capitalism when in reality, we're just letting you know what the exchange, uh, you know, like the paper, the money, in, in some cases, that's just a way of getting products back and forth from human to human. And the amount of that dollar is what is the value of that product that you're buying or selling or whatever the case may be. So for any Marxists out there, I implore you to separate what you think MMT is, learn MMT, and maybe you'll see what we talked about as far as a fiat currency like the USD just being the ex just being the medium of exchange to purchase a commodity. And just because it's produced by government for the people versus banks through business, cars, mortgage loans, there's a big difference. That's why the Fed is a is a government agency, even though it has it gets the thing independently, it still has to report back to government. And it still has to follow whatever government regulation that is put on it. Stuff of that nature. So uh for any Marxists, for anybody who Things they're a Marxist, look into modern monetary theory, look into real progressives, look into Warren Mosler, who is the one of the few founders of this economic quote unquote theory. And hopefully you'll be able to separate the two because you're you're going after the system when we're uh, when we're educating the the connection with the system. I just the only way and the only terminology I could put into it at the present moment. Anyway, that's what I wanted to do for the very, for the longest time, but got onto other things. I'm going to uh, listen to more of Karl Marx's uh, Capital on YouTube at some point, maybe tomorrow, because the meetings upon meetings, I can't wait to go through those, but still. Um, anyway, you guys, thank you for for. Subscribe if you have, and uh, thanks for staying here as a subscriber. It's appreciative. Uh, I'm trying to get MMT out to as many people as I can, and 
teach whomever I can and be as um, clear about it as I can. Sometimes my, my communication is not as clear as it should be. Sometimes the words don't, you know, don't <clears throat> reach my mouth, I guess you could say, or in the right way or in, in saying words in the, in the correct way, anyway, or correct context, anyway. Anyway, uh, but yes, uh, go to realprogressives.org, uh, where the, go up to the far right and look in, uh, and uh, go to the uh, to the bookstore. All the books you can ever need, pretty much for uh, for macroeconomics, is there. That's that should be your your place of getting MMT related stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace out for now.